So before I could start building anything to help me get a better handle on keeping my garage organized, I had to demo out this loft storage area along the back wall. Now, for a lot of people, a loft area might be nice, but for woodworking, it's pretty useless. And for me, it kept me from being able to really use that wall effectively, which is something that I'm going to tackle a little bit later this month. But anyway, this video is going to focus on large storage and two pieces in particular. A vertical plywood storage box and a large cabinet with adjustable shelving that'll be good for lots of big and small things. But let's start with the plywood storage. So I started by breaking down my sheets using my track saw. The smaller pieces, like the top and the bottom, and shelves are going to get refined later on at the table saw, but the two side pieces are just going to be full sheets. And then in this shot I'm ripping 3 quarters of an inch off of what's going to become a center partition. And that's just to leave clearance for a back panel. Next I use my table saw to break down the smaller sheets of plywood into what will become the shelves, and, well, the smaller pieces of the cabinet. And actually speaking of that, let's talk about how this thing's going to come together. So there's three pieces of essentially full sheets of plywood that are going to make up the two sides and the center partition. And then obviously there's a top and a bottom. And this is how I first had it designed, which led me to a problem in that sliding a full sheet of plywood into this would basically be impossible, since the opening is exactly the same size as the plywood. So for a second I thought about not having a top, but that would be probably pretty bad for structure and dust, so yeah, I put the top back on. And instead, I decided to put some spacer strips on the top to make the whole thing an extra couple of inches tall. And that solved the problem. So full sheets and really long pieces can go on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side I put two shelves to make three cubbies. The bottom one is slightly larger than a half sheet of plywood, and they get increasingly smaller as they go up. I also don't plan to pack this thing full of just plywood, so it's also going to store hardwood cutoffs which I'd previously kept in a bucket in the back corner of my garage, which left them pretty much useless and ignored. Back in the real world I started putting everything together with glue and screws, and I used these Rockler corner clamps to help me keep everything square and kind of just as an extra set of hands. And here in the back of this shot you can see the bucket of ignored scraps that I was just talking about. It was starting to get a little cramped in the garage, so I decided to move everything out to the driveway before it got too heavy, and then started working on the center partition. So here I'm clamping in a piece that will become one of the shelves eventually, and this is just being used as a spacer right here, so that I can make sure that the partition is exactly where it needs to be. And then I glued and screwed it into place as well. In this shot you can see how bowed some of the pieces look right now, but once I get the shelves in, that's going to kind of force everything straight. Next I use my table saw to rip three thin spacer strips that'll go on the top of the sides in the center partition. And then I glued those in as well, and after they were dry I could attach my top. Here I've stood the unit back up and popped my back panel into place, and I'm just using a clamp to hold it tight to the back while I screw it in. The next morning I took the cabinet back into the garage and enlisted a buddy to help me lift it and slide it into place. And in a video that I'm still editing right now, I'm going to do a bunch of wall and shelf organization, and in this shot you can kind of see how having this big flat panel here basically acts as an extension of the wall. Next I turned my attention to this big bay window area in my garage, and my basic idea here was to build something as big as I could get it so that I could maximize my storage. The problem was that I couldn't build hinged doors or drawers because of the garage door tracks, some lights up on top, and this tool chest below which would stop them from opening. So I decided to go with sliding doors instead. So far in these shots, I've just been breaking down what's going to become my top and bottom pieces, a center shelf, and five vertical partitions which are going to create seven cubbies. Next I use this jig to make a bunch of shelf pinholes to hold the adjustable shelving. Basically I only have a rough idea of what I'm actually going to store in here, and I'm sure it's going to continue to change as things move on, so I just wanted to make it as versatile as possible. 
And the only real trick here is that the vertical partitions are narrower than the side pieces. So on the side piece, I had to inset the jig a little bit so that everything would just line up right in the end. Then the last thing to do before I could start assembling was to cut my grooves for the doors to slide into. And I've done this a number of times on my channel. And again, the trick here is just cutting the top grooves deeper than the bottom grooves so that you can take the doors in and out by lifting them up to clear the front of the bottom piece. That night I could start assembling everything, and this was really just a matter of a bunch of glue, screws, and nails. So while I'm doing that, I'd like to take a second to thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video. So right now you can go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order when you use the promo code 4Eyes. And then you too can look like this. Okay, admittedly, this probably isn't the look that most people are going for, but truthfully, I like being comfortable while I'm working, and the underwear, shirts, pants, shorts, socks, and, well, everything that I've tried from Mack Weldon is super comfortable. And don't worry, you can definitely pick out a more quote-unquote traditionally nice wardrobe or outfit if you head over to their site in peruse. But you gotta admit, construction sites would seem a lot more friendly if you saw more of this boot and sock combo, right? Anyhow. So check them out for yourself by visiting MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order with the promo code 4 eyes. And honestly, their stuff really does feel and look great, so you're not going to regret it. All right, thanks MacWeldon. By the following morning, I'd assembled everything except for the top and the vertical partitions on the top. And the reason for that is I wanted to use the side pieces as a guide to tell me where to drill the shelf pins in the top partitions. And I could have just calculated this, but it's more likely that I would have messed up somewhere and gotten off, so I decided to use the holes as a guide to tell me where to start drilling. And then I could finish off those holes and assemble the rest of the cabinet, including fitting the doors and attaching the back. And we'll set those doors aside for a second and install this thing. And actually, you know what? Special shout out to all my neighbors for always being so willing to give me a hand with lifting heavy stuff into place. Because there's no way that I could have lifted this thing by myself. And in fact, it turns out that the two of us couldn't even put it into place. But that was because there was just too much obstruction above. And with the angle that we needed to kind of hook it in, it just wasn't happening. So poor planning on my part, I guess. But anyhow, we did an emergency removal of the rustic wood countertops that somebody had put in there in, I don't know, probably 1976, and then it was able to fit. And then the next day I just came back and put some reinforcements in since there was a little bit more overhang than I had counted on. The next night, after work, I cut out all of my shelves, and then the following day I started throwing some stuff in the cabinet. So this isn't going to be the final organization in this video, and in fact I don't even know what that's going to be right now, and I'm sure it's going to change all the time, but for now I really just wanted to get things back in the garage and off of the floor. For the doors I wanted to paint them some really bright pops of color with black borders, so I started by spray painting around the perimeter, and then after that was dry I used a Forstner bit to make some handles for my fingers. And then after that I could tape off the edges and get to painting. So like I said, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to actually organize this thing yet, but the good news is now I have a lot more space to play with. And between these two projects, I think I'm going to be able to get a lot of stuff off the ground and various worktops and into a more permanent spot. And I guess when you think about it, humans and stuff in a workshop aren't so different after all. Whether it's in a garage or in the world, we're all just kind of looking for a place. And a lot of us are tools. Special thanks to Spencer Van Bever, Christopher Rayley, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. You all definitely aren't tools. But if you were, you'd be industrial grade, German engineered, top quality primo stuff. But anyhow, 
If you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. Alright, thanks for watching and see you next time.